So this is the video recap for the week that started 25th of May, ended on 29th of May. And I'd like to invite you to um, <clears throat> first have a look at the um, the video that uh, the video replay for uh, that was the um, the morning session, U.S. morning session, the 28th of May that we had. If you go and on the video of starting at 21, about 21 minute and a half, 21 minute and a half until 36th minute. So for about yeah, 15 minutes, I was covering some of the trades that uh, I had already uh, taken on the part of the week. So have a look at uh, this uh, 15 minutes of this video. So that's the, again, the US morning session of the 28th of May. And I was talking about uh, basically some trade on uh, this stock, uh, M -A M -A -R -K, Remark Media, uh, which has been very, you know, quite hot. And I don't think that, you know, since, um, since we covered that on the last video, what happened is that these were the trades that I came in, uh, kept overnight, sold everything. The day basically before we had the earnings uh, report, uh, we had the earnings report and the, the stock basically went from the high of three, almost 350 uh, all the way down to uh, 240. Now we've been like uh, trying, you know, we'll see how it happens, but uh, we've been bouncing on the on the moving average 10 day. Uh, anyway, and also I was covering some of the trades uh, on uh, OVID and uh, SE. So um, part of the uh, trade on uh, on OVID so part of the trade on OVID um, I was left with a uh, position last time that we talked and I had uh, my stop loss. I was at break even. Um, I was at came in. Sorry, I missed the, is it the OVID? Um, oh, one second. Sorry, so OVID. Um, I had left a, a position. I was at my my stop loss was uh, at break even at uh, five and a quarter. And what happened is that on Thursday we had the market that basically that bounced back. So you know, at coming um, at coming on this candle here on the 27th, uh, that that's where we covered in the video that I was suggesting for you to look at again. I had basically took taking the TP1. Um, um, if I remember that was uh, 555 and yeah, 555. And then I had left basically the, the balance that's break even. On the day we had like a, you know, a decent close and then on Thursday the market opened with a gap. But you see, we couldn't manage to, um, on the 15 minutes bar chart, we couldn't manage to basically make a new high. And I really, you know, Kind of didn't like the, the market action i would have thought that basically you know we open with gap up we make a new high above just six dollars i think i'd mentioned that also to you to, to you as well on, on on thursday that it would be uh um if you wanted basically go back in above six dollars would be uh, also a, a nice entry uh, with a nice reward but and a nice um, and a nice uh, risk reward but the market basically decided otherwise on Thursday. Then it basically kept on, uh, couldn't basically make a new high, kept on basically sliding down very, very slowly. And then once I had the market that um, moved below VWAP, and at this stage, you know, we were also be just started below this level of 569, which was like a level of support that I'd seen on the 15 minutes. I, I decided, you know what? not worth to, uh, to hold that trade. Remember that, you know, part of the, um, of the 10 commandments that we have on the uh, module six, I'm telling you, don't waste an opportunity in the sense that you don't need to wait to be, uh, stopped out. 
if you feel the market is doing something wrong. Clearly, the market, the way that basically it happened on on Wednesday, had a nice bounce on the moving average 200, found some resistance on moving average 50, you know, started basically trading back down. Uh, at that stage, you know, I was kind of like, okay, you know, I... I I made some money on the TP1. I'm just going to be a little bit more patient on the, on on the second sell that I had booked at break even at five and a quarter. So, and the market basically managed to close back up uh, slightly above the VWAP. We had a nice open on Thursday, but again, you know, the market couldn't basically pierce through the uh, the six dollar mark. Couldn't make a new high. And when we started basically moving with uh, the, the candle moving with intensity here and breaking this level of support of 569, I, I basically decided to, uh, to jump out. So I, I closed the trade around like 560, 50, 565, 564, I can't remember exactly, but um, you know, I didn't wait to be stopped out at break even, which would probably would have happened, you know what I mean? On that on that same day, the low was 5.15, so I would have been stopped out at break even. But you know, the market action was not warranting me to 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 wait anymore, and I felt okay. Let's uh, let's just basically take uh, take the money and run, and we'll see. We'll we'll revisit a bit later. So that's what happened with uh, with OVID. Uh, the other stock that. Uh, we discussed on Thursday, and I still had a, a, a position on was uh, SE C Limited. So, in this one, what happened is that on uh, let's just look at the um, on this one. If you remember, at uh, basically coming at around, around 76, had a two-dollar stops. I took a first TP1 here. That's the uh, the, the, the the 16, the 15 minutes uh, chart, and I uh, left a position. Um, I had left a position on the, on the break even, and the stop. Sorry, the stop loss at break even. So on. Uh, Thursday, the market had a nice open, went all the way up to almost, you know, eighty dollar and a half, and the high was eighty dollars and thirty seven cents. Then again, the market started turning down, and I didn't like basically the, the market action that we started having here. Um, especially, I didn't like, you know, when we start having the market in the fifteen minutes piercing through uh, all this convergence of moving averages to moving average 50, 10, 20, and the VWAP. And basically at this stage here, you see the the, the, the arrow, that's when I, I bailed out on, on the other half of the position on SE. So uh, I basically sold right uh, probably below the this to $78 uh, mark and, you know, Bail out of the whole position, thinking you know we'll see again. We'll see what happens. We'll see what uh, what shapes up on later on in the on the day of tomorrow. And what happened is that um, on on that I'm sorry on the next day on what was that on Friday? Was on Friday. Let me just make it a bit bigger. So on Friday, the market uh, opened with a gap up here. This is the candle on the, on Friday after, on Friday morning opening, and I thought, you know, I I, I made decent money on the on this trade uh, for the past couple of days, and I thought, you know, we have a nice bounce from yesterday night on the moving average 200 again. So I decided to play an opening price range uh, breakout here. So I. I, I I decided to um, wait that we uh, break uh, break out just above 76 and three quarters, and came in at this level 
but fortunately the market basically started crapping down again and i had a stop of two atrs which was around a dollar a dollar and a half so my stop was just uh, slightly below uh, 75 dollars i think it was like 74 and 90 cents so 74 and 95 cents something like that just just around just around that that level here that you see now the the low on that candle was 75 and dollars and 11 cents and then the market managed to bounce back again took um took like you know some time like really till lunchtime new new york time to start having the market really gathering some strength passing through, you know, the moving average 10, 20, the BWAP, and then starting basically moving back up. Uh, at this stage here, I took a uh, my TP1, um, which was, um, uh, the high was on the 78, uh, 78.14, I think that I took just, uh, just above uh, 78, or just 78. I can't remember, I don't have my, uh, my blotter now. But that's where I basically took my TP1, and I put the uh, my stop loss at break even. Basically, been the uh, the position so so far. So uh, you know, that's one of the example where you know um, again don't need to uh, wait to. If you don't like the market action, you know, you've got to stop plus that break even. Don't, you know, remember that our number one priority is to preserve the capital. That's the number one priority. That's why, you know, I moved my trading a few years ago into that mode where, you know, I'm looking for a minimum risk reward of one, which makes sense when I take the trades. And as soon as basically I manage to do that, then I'm aiming for a lot more. I'm aiming for a, a, a trade that will end up with a risk reward of two, three, four, whatever, you know, it, the market enables me to, 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 to come up with. But as soon as I've got my, my first risk reward of one, and I know that I can take that trade, and I know that uh, my percentage of winning trades is, is, you know, high enough that I will uh, make up the money, then I try to secure my uh, my position and I put my stop loss immediately at break even. Sometimes you know you have the patience and you just basically wait through and sometimes again you have to be opportunistic and see that the market is not doing what it should be doing. On that day, on Thursday, I didn't like the market option and I didn't like I saw the market accelerating just you know below the conversions of moving averages and below you know that level of 78 that's the you know up, you know below the, the the when it went through the low of that candle below 78 dollars i said okay that's it i'm out and i'll 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 revisit later on and that's what i did you know and and there was a nice bounce and we'll see you know maybe this time is going to be the right the correct bounce this is the, maybe this time is is the bounce that we'll see or the market trades up back to the to the old you know the hold high around the around 84 dollars and at uh, at this stage this is where i i will be working my tp2 so right now you know uh break even at uh, 76 and three quarter and working my my tp2 at uh, 83 and a half so we'll see you know if we can if we can manage if again i see that the market can't manage and come don't doesn't find the momentum to go all the way and start basically acting weird then you know i'll i'll, I'll revisit the uh I revisit, you know, my my stop at break even, and maybe take, you know, some more profits on the on the on the half of the position. All right. Um, so I will look at the um, the weekly. I mean, yeah. The, um, I mean, the market, you know, has has definitely performed extremely well on that on that stock. It's went up like hundred, almost hundred and thirty percent. From the end of March, um, from the bounce on moving average 50 weekly, and since then, you know, it's been 
it's been finding some support on the AMA10. Uh, we might see again. We might see a push to the all high. I mean, I, I, that's that's why I'll I'll I'll, I'll be looking at uh, exiting half of the position, and we'll see. You know, we might, it might be that we see another you know breakout on the on the upside above that uh, that high at uh, 83 and three quarters, and we might see a lot higher markets. But at this stage, you know, right now this is this is the first level of resistance it will find and okay one of the stocks that i traded also during um was that last week i remember when uh, when i traded the i think it might have been the week before mrna um you know that stock remember that uh, with you know we covered that uh, that before so again huge performer as well huge volume that we've seen in the past few days few weeks and on that particular day you know you'll notice as well as something that maybe i haven't talked about uh in the past or not enough but a lot of times where you're going to see a massive amount of volume compared to average volume so in in that case you know we traded on that very day almost 81 million shares whereas you know the average has been more around 18 you know 20 million shares so we trade like four to five times as much uh, as the average amount of shares that we do usually when we get that sort of huge uh, volume going on compared to the the average volume when we get a huge gap up like that and usually that's a sign of exhaustion of the market and you know the direction that you will see on that day we had basically a huge gap up and finishing down you know on a lot of volume it basically gives you a good idea of what we can expect for the next few days uh, the combination of very high volume and the direction of what the can you know the candle is going to show us like a reversal here it gives us basically a good a good idea so remember that you know when i came in i came in around that level around the 66 level i thought that basically we had reached out this area of of consolidation of support we were basically trading on the moving average 10 i saw the markets kind of like finding some equilibrium there and that's when i basically i started the uh, i started buying on the, on the 60 minutes uh, signal uh didn't happen got stopped out um uh, and i got stopped out you know uh, i can't remember the, the the exact level but you know um my regular basically 280 r stop i think it was seven dollars so um i think i went uh, i was long around 71 dollars or something like that i got stopped around 65 dollars but you see the market we discussed that but the market went all the way down to on you know under 49 dollars so again as a note of uh, precaution you know always honor your stops that's the most a very important thing but when uh, last time we talked about the mrna what i, I was saying is that we, i was i was looking at the uh, the 60 minutes and i thought okay this is a nice area i think we talked about it on uh, when was that um, yeah on thursday so that was when we talked about it on thursday here uh, here and i said i think that we you know what i'd like to see is the market to consolidate not being able to basically go through the moving average 220 10 and I'd like to see the market eventually basically flushing down again one last time to this area, $46, $47. And then I would be very, very happy to start looking at taking another trade. Um, obviously, it didn't happen like that. Uh, the market didn't do much on Thursday when we talked about it. And on Friday, kind of like also didn't do much uh, about it. But on the last hour of a uh, session, it uh, went up quite a lot. And today on Monday you know we, we're seeing a, a a good bid again the market is up like a, almost two percent um, in pre-market but you know in I would say that you know in, in, in retrospective then obviously this was the area where you know there was a great entry I, I I missed it I don't know maybe I was not looking I was definitely uh, not looking at that that stock unfortunately um but 
you know, if you look at the daily chart, this convergence of, of price supports, horizontal price support, all around, you know, the 40, uh, you know, the 46, 47, 48 area, on top of basically trading right on the moving average 50 daily, which again, you heard me saying, but you know, it is a very big support usually for uh, this, um, a trending stock, a momentum stock, like we've had in mRNA, mRNA. And we also had, you know, nice levels, you know, uh, of, you know, of sold levels on the, on the daily uh, stock RSI. But if we look also on the, um, going back to the 60 minutes, we had also a very nice uh, area here of our sold area on the, on, on the 60 minute. So, you know, in retrospect, obviously this big correction was was the great entry point you know it was like a we traded on that huge price support area 45 47 dollars we had oversold levels of on stock rsi 60 minute daily we had this i think I remember on the um, on the 15 minutes here we had a bit a, a, a big um, engulfing pattern and trading above the VWAP, just, you know, here, just above $50 and 20 cents. This was like a, a great entry here. You know, obviously it was, this was the best risk reward entry that we could, we could have hoped for. Um, okay. We, you know, it will live another day. We will live another day. You know, but most important thing is like, you know, I, I, I took my stop loss on a trade that I could have bought, that I could have gone really bad. Um, it's just a pity that, you know, I didn't, pay enough attention on as a follow-up on this trade because you know uh set of e. right let's look at um one of the trade that uh, i took on friday and i think that was the last trade that i took on on that uh, for the week and this trade uh basically starting flashing on my volatility scanners on my breakout scanners um and that's G M B L So GMBL is a um sorry it's a in the leisure you know it's an entertainment group so basically i think it's like all uh, esports you know they had a news they had a, a, a news catalyst that came out saying that they had set up a i think a company in the state of new jersey to start licensing and distributing you know the new esports and i think that now that we we know that uh, in the states probably they're going to start reopening slowly slowly in all the esports all the, the spot betting has been uh, stopped literally for, for for weeks you know there was like a, this combination of news and 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 big action um that we saw coming out on on that on that stock um obviously let me just make it a, a slightly uh, big so we had a first level here which was a very important level to break which was a 650 675 area okay that was the first level and you see the past week or so we had some decent volume that came back on that stock some access, first acceleration first day where we saw like unusual volume where we traded uh, a little over 5 million shares whereas you know the average uh, had been more like uh, 500,000 shares so we traded like almost 10 times the average volume on that day we had a good acceleration, but the market basically, I didn't, I was not watching this, the stock on that, on that day. Okay. The way what, what I'm showing you now on the chart, but what I'm trying to show you is that we had indication already the week before that there was some interest coming back in that stock. There was some volume that coming back, unusual volume that came back, but you know, it got, it stalled, you know, it really basically got, got, uh, stopped this level, the 650, 675 area, where we, we'd seen like loads of sellers before and it didn't manage basically. The, the, then the stock kind of like came back, started like trading again, back down, you know, found support on, on moving average 50, 10, 20 um, on, on low volume, slightly slightly better volume that we, we, we'd seen um, over the past uh, months. 
and then we started having this week some action so we saw action on Thursday and it was not a gap or anything like that it's just basically again showed um, unusual volume to compare to what we traded uh, usually so 3.3 million and where I got uh, involved was on Friday where basically my scan started like picking up on a lot of volatility uh, unusual uh, high relative volume and breakout of um, uh, basically one month three month six month breakout you know at 652 that's where I got you know most of the of my uh, alerts that came in flashing and what happened on that stock is I looked at the big picture and I felt okay we've we've basically come through this big area of 650 next levels that's going to be quite important is going to be this level 983 and we might see some resistance around the moving average trend weekly which was around 850 but still I mean the the, the potential potential which was was quite nice on the upside to play on that on that day so what happened is look at the uh, probably the best way to look at the 15 the 15 minutes um let's see the five minutes or something so what happened is basically i played the the breakout above 675 but uh, the usual way that I play the these breakouts is by just putting half of the the regular size that I would put and wait for some kind of pullback over the breakout area or one of the moving average to start rebuilding the other half so what I did is like you know I came in on the on the breakout um, at above 675 so I came in at uh, Think like here's 710 so I waited for basically the you know the candle the first candle that went that went through the breakout and to take the high of this candle and I came in basically at 710 I had a stop loss at uh, of one dollar so that was basically in line you know what the 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 ATR um, we've seen recently so 280 was about one dollar so just uh, below 610 which was you know gave, gave me like plenty of space um i would have you know maybe i could i could have used like a, a stop that was a little bit uh, less wide like 630 635 i think would have been enough but um okay you know 610 was was you know in, in that area so you know quite uh, below the the breakout area gives uh, plenty of space to to maneuver and so um i first i took a tp1 i think here or here um at um at uh, eight dollar and, uh, and ten cents so i think i was at on that candle yeah the high of this candle was 8.24 so um took the the partial profit 810 and then went back to put the stop at at break even at uh, at 710 and the market basically went back down um, got stopped at break even um, so I managed only to take you know a first a first partial remember that basically it was only half of the size that I would go for and what happened is that I waited for the for the market you know to, to settle down to find some support um, in between basically VWAP and just above moving average 1020 when I started looking at the market curving back up here you see the second I, I'm I, I and attempted a, a second re-entry so just above that that level I, I, I came in at 697 uh, again using the same stop one dollar stop so it was like 597 around around that that area uh, sorry um, that's the around that area okay I could have I could have used like again I could have used a, a much tighter stop like let's say I could have used like 
maybe 650 you know maybe a 50 cents uh, stop but okay i kept it you know the same way that i had on the first trade just to give me a little bit of uh, of leeway and what happens like this time when i saw the market doing what it was doing um and because i'd got stopped you know on but break even on the, on, on the second half of the uh, my first trade i said i think there's a good potential that uh, they're going to bring it back up to the uh, to the high of the day which was 826 so what i did is obviously i put a, i put a, a first target profit at uh, about 10 cents below that so 814 uh, 815 that area and i i took a a my first partial on that second trade at uh, around 8 14 8 15 then put my stop at uh, at break even and and right now you know i've, I've got this um, sorry one second Sorry, guys. And right now, basically, you know, pre-market on Monday, the market has, has, has definitely gone back down big time. But, you know, on very, very little volume. I mean, we, we've seen like extremely low volume on that, on that thing. So um, right now, I've got my, uh, you know, my stop at break even just uh, above 6.95. Um, we'll see what happened, uh, you know, on the, on the, on the open. Um, as far as I'm concerned, um, I think that... Uh, we should be able to see some decent potential on that, but uh, again, it depends on the, whether you know we can we can be we can basically go through the, the the high of last session Friday, and that means that you know next targets are going to be around in this area around 11 and three quarters, and then further up, then we'll have like a target around around 15 dollars. On that one we'll see you know, we'll, we'll have to see how what happens on monday so that that was it guys that's the um that's the recap of you know the few trades that happened on the last week and uh, we'll have the morning sessions we'll cover you know some of the uh, the, the candidates uh, of this week to come uh, starting on monday 1st of june um let's have a happy month happy trading month of june and we'll uh We'll talk. Bye, guys.